I just want to give you, share with you a few testimonies about guys in this season. I pray that you will be led by the Holy Spirit in a very, very natural way even. And I want to tell you that many times it's very shocking how God can lead you in a natural way. And where you not necessarily have peace so majorly in your soul about it. But you could have confusion in your soul. I, if I talk about protection, the first one that I want to mention is uh, in the army. We went uh, for a funeral. I need to play trumpet in a in an army state funeral. And uh, we went to Uppington from Kimberley. And uh, me and another guy, we were sleeping at the back, other trumpet player and two drivers. And 130 kilometers an hour, front tire burst. Boom. Boom. We went like that. Boom. 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 The vehicle was written off. But when we went for it, I just screamed out three times, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If I say make sure you are full your life, that when the crisis is coming, you will scream out Jesus and not scream out some other words. You with me? And we just, when we cast, the car stopped, we just got out of the car. We thought the car's going to explode or something like that. Nothing was broken. No real bleeding of the guys all for the guy that, the people that came, they said, did you get out of this car? And you look like that. Hello? And um, four months later, the one guy that was an atheist, he was the driver, came to me. He always mocked me about Christ and everything there in the army. And uh, he came to me and he said, I need to give my life to Christ before I leave the army. I said, whoa, what, 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 why? I said, no, I was in the car and I heard you screaming out the name of Jesus. And I don't believe in, I thought I will not believe in anything of this. And then, your God protected me also. And when I got out of the car, I saw three men in white clothes, big men, just there for a moment, and then they were gone. He said, I didn't even serve your God. I mocked him, and he protected me also. And, boo, him, boo, me, and... <laughs> And he gave his life to Christ. I said, God, it would have been nice if I could have seen the angels also. <laughs> but okay, it was for that man. Hallelujah. Another one was uh, number two. Hey, started with Kriari. It's me and a secretary <clears throat> and a few students. And we came from a place 23, 24 years ago. I was driving this car, but um, retreats. It's uh, they plaster uh, other uh, tires around your existing tire, something like that. Ask Lawrence, he will agree with me. Okay, so bottom line, actually a bit dangerous. And so we went, I was driving 120, I wanted to pass the car, and got, I felt slowed down. I felt slowed down. And my mind says, what, why? So I don't have this, God is saying, or I have this peace, or I believe the Lord. Nothing like that. And I was just like, for what? And I went slower and slower and slower until 60 in a row, on a road that must, you must go 120. And I went up to 60 kilometers an hour and boom, front tire burst. And we just went off like that. We just went, I didn't tell her that. We just got out of the car and we praised God in how he protected but his guidance, my brother and my sister, was, it was confusing for me. It was in the presence, there was more a presence of confusion than a presence of peace or experience, guidance. I'm challenging you to say, many times God is actually guiding you when you could maybe feel very confused. That you can ask God, God, why am I confused? It's because you have some serious thing for me to go to the right or what's, what's happening here. Are you with me? Number two. Number three, went with my wife and kids. 
I don't know if it was just Jane and Jenny. I think just Jane. Normally, when we go on the road, we go far. We get on the in one. Then one of the one of us will pray for the road, and there we go. And as we drove, we went to go underneath the bridge, the two bridges that those yeah two bridges of the university, you know where the library is. You know, what's I wrote wrote around Vainat Muton. Vainat Muton. I just felt I must pray now. And I prayed as I went through underneath the bridges and I prayed. Thank you, Father, you protect us, you protect protect the vehicle, protect blah 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 blah. And uh, and I wondered afterwards, now why did I pray now? And that was my response. I didn't experience thank you, Lord, that I pray when you let me to pray <laughs> why did I pray now 100 meters further when Nelson Mandela came in I was standing like this and a truck came and the old Umi came I don't know where he looked but he was boom in me and when I when we stopped my the steering that means the, the car went just like that not like that in front of the truck. It just changed. Why then afterwards you realize that was absolutely God. If you say, no, but this and this, then why would God say three minutes before the time? Three minutes, that's 180 seconds, I think. Three minutes before the time, pray now. And so many times you're going to experience something and you will not necessarily have this unction that this is what the Lord is saying. Small things that can make a major difference. Me and my wife and kid totally crashed in front of a truck. I don't know what could have happened. Tire in front, 120 kilometers an hour. What could have happened? Hello, that was number three. Number four. And then number five. Number four, going up in, what's that thing? Parfit. That's coming past the Mimosa Mall. Crossing there at Parkweg where the flowers are. You're going up, then you're going to the, the church. And in the olden days, old days, the double road going there, just after the turn, I must go to the left. So if you use your brain, you must be in the left, on the left side, in the left lane. Are you with me? You, some of you guys have licenses, you know. There, so that you can go there. You with me? And we are going, and God says, and it was like brick. It was like, put on the brakes. So me, and go behind the car that's in the right lane. But that's pathetic, because it's stupid. Because just after the turn, I must go to the left. And as I went behind, and that car was in the turn, a guy with a little truck just boom, went over the red light from the other side. That this guy in this lane even <coughs> did that because of that guy coming through. We would have just been from glory to glory in heaven <laughs> immediately. My question was, when I did that also, why am I doing this? It was not I experienced God is saying. Why am I doing this? That was what I felt. Last one. Some of you guys know that. I testified about that in church, I think. About a year ago, me, Jalene, Jaden, Himna, we went for, I think, a wedding. And um, as we went on the N1, I started to pray in tongues. Now, I said this morning, it was only once that I prayed for about two, three, four hours in tongues right through. It's when I drove with a guy uh, when I did the hiking. And uh, the guy picked me up. He said, you can come in, but um, the next town, always the people that I pick up, they climb off. <laughs> they don't go further with me. I said, no. From, from the Cape to Bloemfontein, under six hours. And he stopped four times. Less than one hour 
for the 200 kilometers between Lanesburg and Beaufort. I never saw the Karoo so quickly. Ding, off the bush and ding. <laughs> but this guy, his music was loud. So I was like that, loud. I'm talking loud because it's, I don't think it was funny. And the only time in my life I experienced as if God is laughing at me. Okay, later it was special, then not. <laughs> Saying, you see, I can get you to pray. <laughs> I can't remember the words. To pray long, for a long date, or for a long date a bit. So, that was it. But in any case, and this was the other time. Got in the car, got on the N1, started to pray in tongues. When we went past Kosberg, two hours, I said to Jeline, I don't know why. I'm just praying in tongues the whole time. More than two hours already. Just praying in tongues. And then we turned off, and I can't remember the town, town's name, to a little dorpy. And as we went past the one road to go out next to the township, whoa, big stones in the roads, place where tires were burned. This guy ran over with a bob wire. Whew. Quickly put it over, there's trucks, um, here and there a car, a vehicle, but further it's just trucks. And, uh, and we saw this is not good. And there's some guys with stones throwing at the truck. And when you're in that situation, maybe some of you other guys were there before, but it's a different feeling <laughs> when it's real. And you have wife, but you have two small kids with you. And you cannot, you see the stones this big, pop wire, you cannot pass. Trucks, you cannot. Guys throwing stones. Okay, we prayed, everybody. And then this one guy came with a stone. I just opened up the window and said, in Jesus' name, why are you doing this? And the guy in Afrikaans said, Manier, mister, we are so fed up. We've spoken, we've tried everything to have water. There's no water to drink, there's no water for toilet, there's no services. And he looked at me and went and put the stone there right in front. Now I wanted to feel, I wanted to say, yes, let me go with you and put all those stones on the municipality, you know, on their building. I don't know if that will help. But okay, that's not God, eh? Not at all. And we were praying there, and suddenly the one truck at the back felt he had enough. And he went through, he took the, all the bob wire with, <laughs> you know, a little screaming thing, went over a stone or two or three, and he was through. And I saw a gap, but the other trucks were still, uh, I don't know, coming. And I just felt, I must take this gap. And I went behind this truck, and I went in front of the truck coming, and went off the road on this side. It's not that I knew exactly what's laying ahead <laughs> next to the tar road. And I went past the three trucks where the guys are throwing stones from this side. And the trucks here, and we here, and boom, we are through. With, my, with the children and my wife, they were like, <laughs> but God was just there. Now we say, sometimes people say, yeah, oh, it was just God's grace, you know. But then why? Why will God tell me three hours before that time to start to pray from Bluefontein? So when you, that moment is there when you must pray in tongues, you do it. When you just feel, just a, a small unction, not really an experience. You feel you must pray for something or just pray in tongues. You don't know if at that moment you are praying for, for a church in Azerbaijan, 10 people that are serving Christ, they're shelled in their place, something's going to happen, they're going to be bombed. And at that moment you are doing intercession, and because of that intercession, phew, the target is just, phew, and they miss. They go on. Nobody knows. Only in heaven. You will know it's because you prayed in tongues. That guy that had to do the shooting missed. And went further. Are you with me? So allow God. Allow God. Please, guys. 
to guide you in, in ways that you will be shocked when you realize afterwards this was God. Amen? Amen.